Mr. President, I have the honor to present to you James Van Benscoten Dresser to receive at your hand Wesleyan's honorary degree of Doctor of Humane Letters. Jim, you love an open mind as much as you love the open road, and we are grateful that this campus has always been a favorite destination for your motorcycle rides. Part of a family with a five-generation legacy at the university, you have made Wesleyan your cause in so many ways. From taking on two interim cabinet positions to serving as chair of the Alumni Association and later as member and chair of the Board of Trustees, you have exerted a powerful influence. You are a formidable fundraiser, exercising leadership in three campaigns and this year in a 50th reunion that has shattered giving records. To all your leadership roles, you have brought integrity and the hallmarks of a liberal education, a questioning spirit, a vision that transcends the quotidian, and a never-quit determination. Here, overlooking the baseball field named after you, Dresser Diamond, we are proud to honor you as a Wesleyan champion. For your dedication, generosity, and acuity, we are proud to award you Wesleyan's honorary degree of Doctor of Humane Letters. When my great-grandfather began teaching classics at Wesleyan, the Civil War was at the height of its ferocity. Each subsequent generation of my family has included at least one Wesleyan graduate. However, my affection stems not from lineage, but from pride in Wesleyan's special role in American education and the mark it has left on me and my friends. The honor the university is bestowing on me today is de trop, as the French would say. Wesleyan already honored my family beyond expectation by designating our baseball field, the oldest continuously used ball field in the country, as Dresser Diamond. It was my great-grandfather who in, 1960, in 1864 named Wesleyan's first formal baseball team the Agalian Baseball Club. That, that was back when baseball was still two words. After Agales, who some say invented the first Greek ball game. Cardinal sports fans may find it interesting that Wesleyan teams later in the 19th century were known as the Fighting Methodists. And their color was lavender. These were probably changed because it was so difficult to compose fight songs around the phrase, the Lavender Fighting Methodist. <laughs> Besides, Lavender was much too close to the ubiquitous purple of our little three sisters, Amherst and Williams. <laughs> I began volunteering out of a desire to pay Wesley and back for, my, for the passionate faculty, the inspiring coaches, the caring administrators, and the financial aid I had benefited from. But I soon recognized that my service was helping me develop skills that I was not learning equally well elsewhere. These included soliciting money for good causes, public speaking, running meetings, and motivating volunteers, which has been compared to herding cats. I also have more friends in my class than when I graduated, and friends across four generations of the Wesleyan family. So come home to alma mater as soon as your lives allow. You will get more out of it than you will put in. Finally, Victor Butterfield, who was president when I was an undergraduate, said his goal for Wesleyan was to, and I quote, produce people who will contribute out of proportion to their number, end of quote. This may sound elitist to some, but I believe that the resources expended on each Wesleyan student's education, whether from family savings, 
student labor, or university resources cannot be justified unless we make Vic's goal a reality. The alumni with whom I am honored to share the podium today, Majora Carter, Joss Whedon, Michael Roth, exemplify the thousands of Wesleyan alumni who have leveraged their Wesleyan education to make an impact out of proportion to their numbers. I know that each of you will join them. Thank you.